Welcome to Cebu Expat by Matt Wilkie, discussing expat life in the Philippines. Are you taking your relationship seriously enough? Um, the reason I'm bringing this up is a conversation the other day on one of the chats relating to uh, one-sided relationships because it ends up where some guys are paranoid about taking their partners back to the West. Um, there's a lot of things that change over time because I know people go out with their view often to just meet somebody and see how it goes. But people like myself have come back from the Philippines with family. Um, a lot of guys didn't even plan to have any family. Um, and then they end up the complexities of dealing with the A, the family, B, trying to get them into US, Europe or whatever because of all the immigration headaches. Um, but also a lot of guys haven't budgeted for it. So be aware of this stuff. Just spend a bit of time on it. Because I know um, somebody it was mentioned, well, what if 20 years time that my kids grew up and um, I could go back for somebody else. My relationship's not like that. Me and my wife are um, a traditional marriage. We married for life. Um, that was something that we agreed at day one. Doesn't matter how much of a headache we are with each other. We're we're committed to marriage. That's it. Um, and that's why I I think we probably work quite well. Is um, that commitment wasn't half baked. I commit to the marriage a hundred and ten percent. My wife does the same. As such, um, we're we're very happy. Um, the only downside is at the moment I'm stuck in the UK instead of being out in Spain. Um, but I'm working on that. But the marriage life as a, as a marriage, um, people notice how happy we are as a couple. Um, even now, when you think it's over your eight years of marriage and we're still happy, um, we're quite you know we look forward to spending all day together. Uh, it doesn't matter what we're doing. Um, but we also share hobbies, so we're a bit unique like that. Um, but also, I, I want to point this out as well. My wife is very well educated. Um, she's a graduate engineer. Um, she's also, even as a child, competed at a national level with things like Spelling Bee. Um, she's pretty smart. So... The reason I want to emphasize this because a lot of guys do not have um, a partner with the same sort of education levels. Um, there's some out there, but a lot of the guys I know, um, their partners may not even have finished secondary school. I'm not saying they dated them at that age, I'm saying that they never finished school. Um, and with Philippine culture, having a mindset where kid adults um, don't mature as quickly as they do in the West, that could be quite a big problem in a relationship. But it's all about long-term thinking. You have to decide what you want, um, but don't commit to anything till you do. But also be be fair. You know, communicate to the partner. Um, what your serious intentions are. Don't promise the earth and deliver nothing because then you can't complain if she uh, does something to you. <laughs> um, I, <don't> know. <laughs> I, I say that jokingly, but some of the stuff that happens to expats is pretty brutal. Um, some have been murdered, poisoned, etc. But I haven't met anybody um, that had that happen to them. Uh, I just know of it from reading newspapers and stuff. Um, I've never met somebody directly that has had a partner do something bad to them. Um, but most of the guys I know, they have done something stupid, um, have created the problems themselves. They've been, but nothing, nothing as major as somebody trying to kill them. The, the mo most they're whining about is the wife trying to get some support. But at the end of the day, that's life. You know, you've got to take responsibility for some of your actions. Um, I hate it in the West. I think the West is absolutely nuts on this stuff. 
Um, there's a reading, a recent one this week, where a woman has been lying in court about abuse by her ex-husband, etc. Don't know what the full facts are on that, but basically the judge decided to give custody of the child to the father. She was like stopping, he, they had equal rights of access to the, the child, but she was stopping him seeing the child, she was lying in court, etc, etc. So she upscones with the child. Now, the first thing they do is they say missing, missing with the child, because it's a woman. Um, the reason I emphasize this is if it's a guy, they use terms like snatched, kidnapped, very aggressive with it. The media love that. Um, but when they actually um, get hold of the woman, she has not even been charged with any crime. Yet, if it was a guy, he would be in police custody in this instantly. Um, child courts in the UK, they have these, they're called mediations, um, where basically nobody's, you're not allowed to discuss the information outside of it. If you get any of the information to fill in the forms to have a mediation, first thing they're after is the guy's money. They want the bank details, where he's working, etc. You haven't even discussed what you're doing with the relationship. Um, so, yeah, uh, the West is messed up. But I'm saying in the Philippines, don't be the reason why this stuff exists. <laughs> be the better man. You know, if you're committed to a relationship and decide that you don't want to do it anymore and you've had kids, whatever, take responsibility. Life's not easy in the Philippines. Um, but at the same time, if you decide to go abroad and then your kids grow up and you want to go back and find somebody new because you fell out with the wife whatever that's up to you but myself i was single when i met my wife i was happily single um i want to point that out because i would come out of a relationship i've been in for 11 years already um the relationship i was in before that i think was nine years um and i i'm happy uh with my wife but also I, I don't have this desire or problem with being on my own. Um, I don't have to have somebody with me. If, if I wasn't married now, I'd be either riding across India on a motorbike, yachting around somewhere, or fighting against ISIS with the Kurds. <laughs> you know, Because most of the other stuff stops me doing it, you know. I can't go and fight against ISIS with the helping the Kurds because I have a wife and kids. Um, if I didn't, I would. I'll be honest with you, I would. I wouldn't even think twice on it. Um, there's multiple reasons why, and I know I'm not. I'm probably one of the few people who think that was sane to do it, but um, I have my own reasons. Um, but yeah, run across. Uh, India is on my cards, but I've been struggling to do it because we've been settling in Europe. Uh, I've got a couple of people that want to do the ride. We're going to get some Enfield bullets, um, which are manufactured in India. Uh, we've already sorted the route and stuff out. But the the point is, that's what I would be doing if I was single. So I'm not like somebody. I know a lot of guys are worried about being on their own. I couldn't care less. Not in a negative way, by the way. Not in a negative way. What I mean is, I'm happily married with my wife, but if I was single, I wouldn't be running around trying to meet somebody else. I don't need to. Um, I'm content, you know. I think that's another another factor is we're content as a couple, you know. We're content as individuals. Um, we have a very strong connection with each other in so many ways. But... It, if, if you're already planning on the exit strategy at some point, maybe you need to reevaluate what you're doing with the relationship in the first place. Um, because I don't plan an exit strategy. Um, that's half the problem in the West. People didn't don't take things as serious as they should do. Um, it's just the way the West is, uh, unfortunately. They sort of lost that um connection in many ways all right thanks for watching